Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Haverford Sports Media. It is a miserable night here in Havertown, but we're here, AG Cornog Field. It's the Raptors and the Fords. Radner coming into town, 3-0 and on the season. Had a bit of a good season last year, to say the least. They finished in 2023. I apologize, as this is loading 12-5-1. They finished 8th in the district. They had themselves a season, and they're not done yet for this season so far. They beat Kennett 15 to 4. They beat Twin Valley High School 8 to 7. They lost, I apologize, they're 3 and 1. They lost to Garden City 5 to 4. And then they beat Gulf Coast High School from Florida 14 to 7. It's been a dominant performance. They're putting up points, and it's very impressive. Uh, you summed that up pretty well, Connor. Um, and I forgot to say, it's uh, Connor Salvis and Matthew Brolick in the booth. Matt, I know it's rainy, not ideal conditions that you want to be out here, but how are you feeling? You know, man, I'm good. Uh, can't complain. Uh, long spring break for Haverford. I don't know if all the other schools had spring break the same week we did, but we're just getting back from it. This is our first day back. Um, not a good one, to be honest with you. Uh, the rain and the temperature and the winds um, all are combining together to make a pretty um, pretty bad day, to be honest. But we're out here for girls across. Um there's nothing bad about that. Fords, so far this season, not the start they wanted. According to PIAA District 1's website, the Fords are 0-3 to start this one. But let's set this straight. A 12-8 loss versus Westchester Henderson is a good loss. That is a good loss. An even better loss is a 10-9 overtime loss to Great Valley. Great Valley is a good team. The fact that the Fords hung into that game, very impressive. They lost 8-2 to Kennett, Matt. That was the game the other week that we broadcast. Yeah, that was our first one. Um, and to be honest with you, I mean, the Fords were playing well. Um, if I am remembering correctly, it was, I think it was 2-2 two -two going into the half. And then they went on a 6-0 run to... Win against the Fords. Um, so, I mean, if we can see that kind of lacrosse out of these girls tonight, um, I'm pretty sure they can put up a good fight against uh, this Raptors team, who obviously, coming into it, um, might look like the better team here. Uh, but I think it'll be an interesting one. Weather definitely has some uh, something to do with the play. Uh, we're going to see how that affects these girls out there. It's cold. It's windy. Uh, it's rainy. It's not weather you want to be out there playing lacrosse in. But, again, should be an interesting one as both teams take the field and we are getting ready for the draw. In net for the Raptors is... Arden Jansen. She's had a good season so far, no doubt about that one. She had six saves in her last game on, I believe, just a couple more attempts than that. So she's off and running. Uh, excuse me, her and the Raptors are off and running for this season as Radner will win the draw, and they're off as Caroline Wilt. I apologize, our schedule here, uh, excuse me, our roster here, not the easiest to read. But we're going to do our best. It's a windy day. I mean, <laughs> it's a rainy day. It's been a long week, but we're glad to be back in the booth. And I uh, couldn't ask for a better person to be here with uh, than yourself, Matt. Well, that, that just – I love hearing that, man. Uh, and I'll say the same exact thing about you. As the shot's taken, it's really hard to see. Yeah, even, <laughs> even the booth here, the, our, our windows are not very uh, – Clear. 
No, not really. Um, but we are making do. Absolutely. That is the truth. Um, so we apologize in advance if there is anything that we don't see out there that you guys might see on the stream. Um, yeah, keep in mind the especially the especially on this um, this side of the field that they're on at the moment uh, is definitely tricky for us to see. Oh, what a pass. wow! Hold on, uh, we could see that. Erin Mooney. I mean, she had the entire left side of the net open. Hezzy, spin around, golf shot. <sighs> that is a bold way to start this one for the Rider Raptors. Truth be told, there. Great shot by her. Uh, I think the Raptors here are just trying to set a tone for the rest of this uh, game. Already scoring very quickly. Puts them up 1-0. Back to the draw we go. And... The Fords pick it up. That's Ava Perdelli. Whistle blown. Play will continue on. Here come the Fords trying to knot this one back up at one. As we got some fans coming up here. Rain or shine. The Fords faithful always come out and support the team. I don't believe those are Fords fans. Well, they're on our side, so we're going to go with that. Some truth to that. 9.48 to go here in the first. Again, new scoring and timing rules, I should say. New for this season. Very interesting still. Uh, we're not too used to it yet. Second game right. broadcasting. Uh, those rules. I, I mean, I, I actually do like, I do like it like this. Um. I think it's interesting, but I think it makes the pace of play a little quicker. Um, I like how they switch sides, and I think it adds a new aspect to the game because you see both sides of the field. As the Raptors here again with a fast break. They decide to reset back X area behind the net. And they're going to swing it back up top to the perimeter. It's Grayson Buono who's going to swing it over left to number 11, Kara Ruggieri. Ruggieri still with the ball. At the 20, she passes to her left. Good move by Mooney. Mooney goes back inside. Ruggieri has a look, does not pull. She will drop back and reset as it looks like there was some whistles blown on the field. We got ourselves... I believe an indirect, but I could be wrong about that, and I apologize, Matt. Do you know? I believe you're right. I think that is an indirect there. No, it was a direct. Uh, it was a direct. <laughs> oh, we were but both wrong. You know, 50-50 shot. They don't execute. <laughs> McCloskey with a big save. Still a one nothing game. We apologize about that one. We're still trying to figure out how we could see and understand uh, everything about that. Yeah, I really, I mean, I got, I got very unlucky with, I can't tell Mike, you're good. You're good. I can hear myself. Um, I got really unlucky with my my seat here tonight. <laughs> um, this left window here that I'm looking out to see the field is completely fogged up. Uh, I've been trying to try to wipe it away. It has not worked very well. So I I can see players. I cannot see numbers very well. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. But we're gonna do our best. As it looks like number eleven, Kara Ruggieri. They're going to swing it out to number eight, Sarah Kelly, who's going to fire a shot, but it will just go long. McCloskey's out of goal. Radner's going to have an opportunity here. Running in, again, does not execute. Looks like they're having some opportunities. That was number 19, Taylor Murphy, who had a look. Murphy drops back to the X. Oh, wow, what a shot swinging around. Ring around the Rosie. Yeah. Underneath. That's a good shot by Ryder. Really good shot. Um, and I, I mean, 
I, <laughs> there isn't much to say about that. The Raptors have been in control, driving the bus this whole entire game so far. About seven minutes left to play. Um, two nothing Raptors. Fords have had a very small. Sorry about that. The Fords have been in control not very long. I'd say a good 30 seconds they had while the Raptors have pretty much had the rest of this time. And they already have two goals and could have easily, I think, had two or three more. They had a couple missed opportunities. Um, but doing some kind of clapping formation on the bench. <laughs> very interesting. As we go back to the draw... Got to do what you got to do to enter entertain yourself in the rain, I, I guess. Absolutely. It's cold out there, too. I am I'm lucky to be in this booth. Yeah. Right <laughs> Fords, Fords are trying to huddle up under the blue tent on their sideline, but, you know, not always luck there. No. Fords fighting. Comes away on top. Here come the Fords. 6.33 to go. And there's Fredelli up top again. In control of this Fords offense. Apologize if the scoreboard was not updated there again. We're running the two-man show up here. We got no one running the tech, so True. we're doing everything we can. Uh, we do apologize. It's uh, rainy and, and windy and cold, and it's a good lacrosse playing. There's Elsner now. Back in the X area, trying to look for a cutter. Can't find anyone. Missed opportunity there. Scooped up by the Raptors. That's number 14 taking it. Quick pass to 23. Makes a move. I believe that's Chloe Taylor covering her. Coaching staff telling the Fords to drop back. There's a wide open Raptor. Oh, fires. my goodness gracious. Looked like number eight, I believe, Sarah Kelly. Gee whiz. That was a nice shot. Three, nothing early. Apologize. That was number six. Again, looked like an eight to uh, cut some slack here. Grayson Buono. Great shot by her. I mean, just textbook play there by the Raptors. Run down the field and take a shot. Bang. Another goal. Makes it 3 2 0. Now, uh, with 538 left to play. Back to the draw they go. And there's the clapping again. Might be a tradition, might be a superstition. I don't know. But you got to do what you got to do. And there are the Fords again. For Deli with it. Number eight, you can see her out there. We're going to see her with the ball a lot tonight. Seems to lead this offense pretty well. Back in the X area. We apologize once again for these technical issues we're having, but you guys could still see the Fords fighting down there on their own scoring end, trying to just put one on the board as we're nearing four and a half minutes to go here in the first. It's a lot of lacrosse we played last season, a matchup between these two teams. Again, 15 to 6, and a great save by Jansen. That was Hillary Elsner there taking that shot. Jansen coming out far, a little risky. As a little sloppy play, still leads to the Raptors having possession. Fords 
could not convert. And they're the Raptors again. Again, it I seems to be the same play every single time. They come out from the X, wide open cutter, easy pass. It's ABC. Pretty simple. Four nothing Raptors. They've been doing it very well this whole game. Uh, and I'm not sure they're going to want to. Not sure they're going to want to. Change anything up. That goal was scored by number 11, Kara Ruggieri. Um, and thank you to our half tech, half statistician, Mr. Keevney, uh, helping us with that. We appreciate you very much. Uh, we're trying to figure things out with the stream at the moment. We don't have our usual stream guy here. Uh, we apologize for that. Um, but we're trying to figure it out. Uh, so just stick with us here. As Again, as Connor said, you can still watch this wonderful game. We'll keep you updated on the scores and the times if those aren't updated. Um, and we'll try to do our best to turn this two-man show. Raptors... Up four to nothing. Three thirty five left to play in this first. Sports with the ball. Need something here. Haven't had very much luck. We got Perdelli with it again. Trying to find something. As the Ford still in possession here, trying to find something. Just great defense by the Raptors, not letting the Fords get anywhere near their zone. There's Elsner. Turnover again. Raptors run down the field. Raptors fire goes left of McCloskey. And Radner takes a 5 nothing lead with just under two minutes to go here in the first. As we head back to the draw another time, um, just a dominant game so far by the Raptors. Not many mistakes on their end. Ford's turning it over too much um, and haven't really taken any of the opportunities they've been given, which have been slim to none because the Raptors have been playing very well. As we see it again, another turnover. And again, the Raptors hustle down the field. Yeah, it just seems like the Fords are getting no help in the transition area in between the two restraining lines from the 30 to the 30. And it, it just seems like they're turning the ball over. They have no help up front. And they, they, they are not fast enough to drop back in time. I mean, it just seems like they're turning the ball over. And then Radner's... Easily getting these opportunities, so. And Absolutely. Sorry about that. Absolutely no problem. 
I was going to say, I think the Raptors, are. Sh- it feels like they're playing a, a faster game than the Fords, much more fast-paced. Um, and the Fords can't do much about it. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying they're not playing good defense because they are. The Raptors have just found these little spaces where they can get through, make a pass, shoot and score. They haven't missed very many shots. Yeah, no, I think you're right, Matt. They are playing a much faster paced game, and that goes to show why they're scoring 15 plus as they'll make it six right here. Wow. Just dominance from the Raptors. It makes sense why they're scoring 15 goals a game, Matt, when they play lacrosse like this the whole season. Unbelievable. And that goal is scored by number eight, Sarah Kelly. This truly has been something. As we are down at 30. 6.1 6.1 seconds. Fords need something desperately here. To change something around. But. Oh, there we go. Fords got something. Ball gets loose. Don't have it for long. The Raptors again. Running down the field. And the Fords can't do much about it. This is, I mean, she just tried to run through three <laughs> different girls. If she somehow got through that, I would be astonished. As I guess they'll call an offensive foul again. I'm sure you cannot do that. But it would have been very impressive if she somehow successfully came out. As that. That'll do it. Ends our first quarter of play. A uh, two-minute break given to the girls and we will be right back
The boys are back in the booth. The girls are back out there on the field. They switched sides. Radner's in black, scoring to your right, and Haverford still in white, scoring to the left ear screen. Radner fires! Oh my God! Right off the bat! 7 nothing, Radner. That's got to be concerning for the Fords. Yeah, that sure is, Connor. Um, no coverage there by the Fords on defense. Raptors take advantage of that one in the, the first 16 seconds. And I mean, that's that just I'm, – I apologize. No, for go ahead. Go ahead. Pure dominance. Absolutely. Um, wow. And she fired that one in there hard. That was – that was impressive. Uh, as we are back to the draw already, as the Raptors have no intention of stopping at all. Yeah, Matt. I mean, they they're not going to stop anytime soon, uh, and they're not playing. They're not. They don't treat this game as a joke. I'll tell you, they take this as serious as any other game because for them, this is experience. This is time for the varsity girls to get out there, play. A game and continue to fight until the end. Because in the end, it's experience and the fact that this team is going to make a deep playoff run both in the district and the state, I, I want to say. Every sort of experience matters. Oh, and tripping at the 45. Oh, and that's not what you want to see from anyone. Look to be serious for a second, but everything's okay. Got to continue on. As the Raptors taking it down the field once more, up 7 Uh They are just in control of this game. Fords need to figure something out. Look in those journals. Read over some plays. Uh, call a timeout, maybe. Get things situated for them. Themselves. And I do believe it can happen. Um, the Raptors, Joe, as, as I say that, um, again. They make it eight. Eight nothing game. They're trying to make an illusion in the last year's game with that 15 spot. Right now they're at eight with ten minutes to go in the second. Going to get ourselves prepared for a route quickly, it looks like. I mean, they're going to have a dozen goals by the end of the the, the quarter. Matt. Yeah. Uh, that goal scored by number 19, Taylor Murphy. And, I mean, just to say, that goal was an explosion. I... I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The speed that these girls are putting on their shots is breathtaking. Watching it from up here, I mean, they just fire bullets into that, that goal. Yeah, and reference to that goal and all the previous ones, it has been the same exact two or three plays that have seemed to propel them continuing goal after goal to the score. It's been this they, they sit behind the goal in the X. They have a, a cutter that comes in. Ford's defense collapses it, and then they cr they pass across the field, and there's a wide open left side of the net. There's nothing McCloskey can do, though. She's got to have help on her the defensive end. Transition defense has to prevent these turnovers. And then you got to convert the ball over to the offensive zone. If you can get past the restraining line, get in towards the attacking zone, towards the 12-meter, that's where you're going to be able to execute that's where you're going to score all your goals. Absolutely. Well put there, Connor. Cheers. As the Forge do have the ball now. Something we haven't seen a lot of this game. Yeah, time of possession has been pretty one-sided, I will say. There's a shot. Saved. Um, Really...
Some whistles blown. Trying to see, trying to locate the ball. There it is. Ford still in the offensive attack. As some pellets are falling from the sky, hitting our windows. I don't even know what that was, Matt. But we're just trying to get by and broadcast some good lacrosse for you guys at home. We appreciate you tuning in. I'm sure a lot of you guys would be out here today if the weather wasn't so inclement. But it is what it is. That's why we do what we do. Absolutely. Forge driving. Whistle. Blown up top. Radner is in their element, Matt. They are not doing anything wrong. Oh, my goodness. And there's a shot. Right on cue. Why not? The first goal that Jansen's let up. There was Avery Perdelli, number eight for the Fords, shooting and scoring that. And that has got to be a sigh of relief. I mean, the concentration of that look, the execution of the shot, the follow-through. Fundamental stuff. Not to snub Radner from any credit because they are playing a heck of a game on the defensive end. But that was an answer there for the Fords. That's a cause for celebration, Matt. It's not premature. It's not anything. They scored on what is one of the top teams in the Central League. That is something to be proud of 100% of the time. Absolutely, but they really need something. I'm, I'm not saying um, I'm in agreement with you there. Um, I don't know if there's any room for celebration. Uh, the Fords are down 8-1, to one, but I, I do see a reason to be a little excited, as I said before, a little sigh of relief. Um, Ford's just lacking, uh, kind of everywhere so far. Uh, the goal could be a turnaround moment. Uh, it, it has to be. I mean, they're lacking in the speed and the pace of the play. But when you get down here within the 12 meter arc, that's when your, your two teams really start to clash. That's when you get the high powered oh, wow. offense from Radner trying to go against the Ford's defense that have struggled historically the past couple of years. That is when it goes down. That's good execution by Radner. It's a nine nine to one game. And Sarah Kelly, number eight, scores that. Um, I mean, they score time and time again, and uh, there isn't much else to say about it. It's almost like we're watching a production here, a movie. Uh, they are just putting on a show right now. Yeah, I don't know if it's broken spirits yet or if they're not at that level i mean i know none of these girls want to be out there playing in this weather i mean it, from the start i think both teams this is going both ways it sets you up mentally to play a different game if this was 64 degrees and sunny or you know clear out i think it's a different ball game i absolutely agree but i mean these girls are still present they're out there um they're playing their hardest um and you know it is what it is. Uh, game isn't canceled. No lightning, no thunder. They're going to play in the rain. They always do. Wind, rain, cold weather. It doesn't stop the game from being played. That's it. We're 6.54 to go in the second. 9-1 to one Radner. They blew open the gate. They're going to look to continue to push as Haverford is going to try to answer back slowly but surely. And they are just not performing how you want them to. Uh, they need to change something up. I mean, go coming into this map, we knew, one, it was Radner. We knew it was going to be tough, right? We knew it was going to be a tough game from the start. 15-6 to six last year. They're 3-1. and one. They beat a team from Florida. They, they're beating teams in the state by large, copious amounts. And the Fords have struggled against some lesser teams in this state. We knew the weather was going to play 
you know, we thought for a while the game was going to be canceled. But it cleared up a little bit. You still got some rain. You could see up in the lights. But we knew this was going to be a tough game from the start. We're not acting like this was a game that was very, you know, we knew it was gettable, but we didn't think that the forwards were going to come out firing. Uh, and I think that's what we're seeing here is what they expected. And a shot! Fired top left over Jansen. That one will go. An operation comeback is underway here. It's 9-2 to two at A.G. Cornock Field. Goal scored there by number 15, Annie Walker. That makes it a 9-2 game. 9-2, that's it. Operation comeback, Matt. They're going to continue to fight back. I do agree with that. Um, Quick shout out to all of the people here, uh, staff and faculty, I should say. Trainer Brendan, Miss Young, Mr. Doherty, the football coach, and assistant athletic directors out here, making sure everything is run smoothly, rain or shine. These are the guys and girls that you got to thank for being out here and always making sure these events are possible. And the Fords, here we go. They're not going to. Let off the gas quite yet, Matt. They're still in this game. And really, that last goal just lifted their spirits. Um, uh, kind of flick, flipped a switch for them. Um, really changed how they were playing. I see a little more ferocity by this forge. It's a little more live out there, you could say. I mean, absolutely, Matt. They are fighting. And even if they're not executing here in the scoring zone, in the center of the, the field, they're still getting in. I mean, there's no need to worry on... There's no need to worry on the offensive attack, I think it's safe to say, Matt, is where their struggle has been even the past two years where we've covered this team and... Today is the defense and the transition defense. Is McCloskey stuck back there, and the defense is intending to do certain things, which Radner, I think, and some of these other teams that have more experience are just reading between the lines and figuring out how to avoid it, and I think that's exactly what it is. And here's Perdelli. Can she get it done? Decides not to shoot. Passes to Walker, back to Perdelli, up top. I mean, that's a healthy pass. That is a good pass, and I like that pass because what it does is it attempts a good, it's a good setup, and what it should do is set up a good attempt of a shot. Unfortunately, it doesn't come away like that this time as Radner gets the ball in the open field and it could go coast to coast down the, down, down the field. Yeah. But I think that's the type of play that can make your mark on a game and on a season. Absolutely, and we are just here to witness it. Um, Fords need to manufacture something here, either a play, a stop on defense, um, and it's going to be a challenge for them. It really is. Uh, but, you know, they scored two. There goes my phone. Still down seven. Uh, two quarters to play. After these last three minutes. Yeah, 2.50 to go. McCloskey picks it up. It'll be Ford's ball. Like a good neighbor, McCloskey is always there when you need. In the net. She's always back there behind the goal. Getting those loose balls. That's what you need. And, yeah. I mean, I was well put. I, I, I like that. I was, um. And I think we're getting to a point in this game and in this season where they know exactly what they have to work on. And teams like Radner is not the best team to try. try. I mean, it's not the best team, but it's a hard team to try it out on because of the experience they have. And, again, this is a team that's going to compete at the state level. Uh, in the state playoffs. It's a team that's going to kind of ride the highway through you know, over the Central League teams, kind of glaze over them all, or most of them. And then when they start getting to these, you know, better teams, they're going to have more of uh, 
tough, tough uh, finishes, I should say. But for a team like this, it's just difficult for the forwards to start practicing what they want to do again. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the forwards, obviously there's things they need to work on. Uh, and as you said, yeah, Radner is not the team uh, that you want to be working on those. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I, you know, I think what you got to do after this game, scrap it, put the pen to paper, reset, figure out what you want to do, and go on with your season. This is one of the best teams you'll play all year long. That is true. I mean, as you said, Radner competes at the state level. Uh, they are no joke of a team. Um, and they really just love to go put on a good performance uh, for the viewers. They do a really good job. It's exciting to, to watch them play, even against this Ford team. They have a lot of, lot of talent on their team. Um, and it's interesting to see how their play differs from the Fords and what the Fords might need to work on. 24 seconds and counting in the Fords. Fire went in. It looks like that left side of Jansen is sort of the weak spot. The Fords have found it three different times, and all three times it has worked out. It is a 9-3 to three game with 20 seconds to go here in the second. Scored by number 15, Annie Walker. That's her second of the night out of the Fords' three goals. We're seeing a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, I mean, it's it's exactly what we talked about earlier, Matt. It's the transition defense is the forwards are converting, not turning the ball over in between the restraining lines, and then they're keeping the ball on the offensive end. Last game, earlier in the first, in this game, you saw turnovers in the transition area and in the offensive end, which just led to way too many looks for Radner's offense. They have to continue to do that. The longer they can hold the ball, time of possession, I, I, you had to guess it's probably 70-30 or something in favor of Radner early on in this one. And it's things like this. There's no defense that can help McCloskey, and she's lost, stuck back there as Radner's going to stick one in late in the second. Ten seconds to go. It's a 10-3 game. And I was just about to say, sorry, uh, goal scored by number 14, Kay Gallagher. I figured I would say that. Um, I was about to say, I mean, there was 20 seconds left in the quarter. I didn't expect another goal, uh, but you can't say something like that when a team like the Raptors is out there. I mean, they come out fierce, uh, and they want to score as quick as they can, just as they did there as Gallagher scored in 10 seconds. Yeah, and if you're Haverford, that's something that you just cannot do is you score two back. You're 9-1, all of a sudden you're down 9-3, and then you go in the final 10 seconds and give up another goal as they have 3-2. They're going to try to fire a shot off. They'll be out of time, but that's just something that you got to prevent in the future. It's you, you have 10 seconds to keep this buffer that you've built enough of, a buffer that you've built, to move on. But some things don't always go your way. It is a 10-3 game. As we head into the half. We'll be back with live coverage of the second half. Here on Havard Sports Media. Connor and Matt on the mic. Stay tuned. Still a lot of lacrosse ahead.
Hello and welcome back to Havford Sports Media. Live coverage of the second half of play. I'm sure if Radner continues to go on this rampage that they've been going on, we'll start to see running clock as this game continues. Because I think it's when they go up 10. Mm-hmm. I think so. That it's running clock. And the way Radner's been playing this season and the scores they've been putting up, I'm expecting to see that shortly. 10-3. 11.40 to go. Radner. X-band the net trying to roll out. Again, you're going to see a cutter, and then you're going to see someone come across of the cutter, and they're going to try to pass out. It's the same play they've been doing the entire game. Whistle blown. I believe it will be taken indirect. I can't see things. Window shot taken. And shot scored. I mean, it's it's clockwork at this point. They continue to, and they've done that a couple times where they've continued to draw fouls and immediately off the direct. I mean, it's it's kind of unfortunate that McCloskey is put in this position where she's back there and kind of hopeless because of what happens around her and stuff she can't control. It's hard to to defend a uh, direct shot. I mean, it's especially from eight meters away. But Radner is finding ways. And they're playing the game exactly as they want to. When it's working out, it's worked out in their favor the past five seasons. And it's going to continue to work out. Um, it's a good mentality that they have over there. Absolutely. Goal there scored by number eight, Sarah Kelly, uh, for the Raptors. I, that's either her second or her third. I've heard that name before. It's honestly hard to keep track. I mean, just look at the speed. I mean, they, they. I don't know if they spend more time conditioning in the off season, or if it's just naturally these girls have been playing longer and have more experience. But they're just they're faster and they're stronger and they're finding looks. They play a more fast paced offense, as you mentioned, and a fast paced defense. They kind of run this like attack the man defense that you don't see other teams run. And it continues to work out. I mean, it's just, it's kind of mesmerizing to watch how this team works because they're so used to it and they're so used to each other and they're all connecting. And I mean, you see it here again. The Fords are continuing to shoot themselves in the foot and giving Radner opportunities to score off, off these directs. And there's Kelly again. Shot taken, shot scored. As you said before, it's like clockwork, Connor. Puts the Raptors up 12-3. to three. Kelly looking unstoppable out there. When you get yourself into a position like that, um, I mean, she knows how to take advantage of it. The whole team knows how to take advantage of the Ford's defense. Uh, finds the little missing pieces in the defense. Uh, either gets past it, draws a foul. They know what to do. I, I'd be curious to see the split on how many of their goals are scored on or off of direct and indirect this season. I mean they're they're three and one, but the t- the in the games that they've won, let's see if I can pull it up, it was just I mean, domination in almost every aspect. Fifteen to four, fourteen to seven. I mean it's just they're doubling, tripling these teams and I think if I had to make a estimated guess it would be a lot of what we're seeing them do tonight and how they're executing. Yeah, and you were saying doubling, tripling. They are quadrupling the Ford score tonight. Um, as, as you said, some of these scores from the past games, other teams have scored, you know, six, seven goals. Ford's stuck at three right now. Um, they're putting up a good fight, but it's there's not much they can do. Yeah, I mean, even if the Fords can get three, four more goals in this quarter, it doesn't set themselves, it doesn't set them up in any position where they want to be. I mean, the defense letting up 10 goals in the first half is like just setting yourself up for, up for failure. Absolutely. And even if the Fords score another three, four goals, the Raptors are going to counter that with another three, four Five, six, seven of their own. Yeah, that's ex- exactly right. They answer back, I think, every single time. Besides that run where the Ford scored two in a row 
and Radner did not get one as McCloskey makes a good save there. Yeah. She got some help from her defense, pressured him out, forced Radner to take a shot. It's exactly what they have to do. But as you said, besides the the one time where it was nine to one and then it was nine to three, Radner has answered back almost immediately as here they go again. Oh, Oof. Wow. Show showing off a little bit there. Uh, that's Kelly again, taking a little behind the back shot. Um, wanted to go for it, and it didn't even matter. Uh, they they got it back, and there's another goal in the next five seconds. Uh, and I believe, yep, that's Sarah Kelly again. Uh, for it's her, at least a hat trick for Kelly. Might be four, might be five at it, this point. I think it's around four for her. Ten uh, point game. Clock is going to run. Until the forwards can prove otherwise. And you can definitely, from what I'm seeing, wind's picking up a little bit out there. Uh, as much as we can't see a lot in this booth, uh, you can see the rain. It's not hard rain, more as like one of those like kind of like shower rains. And it's unpleasant. I mean, yeah. just be, uh, walking up here from the car across the turf up here, it's like, oh, this is terrible. I can't imagine being out there running around playing this you know, type of sport in this weather. It's just... Goodness knows. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the third. We're going to see a little bit of a pickup in the pace of play here, obviously. Um, Ford's down 10. Clock runs, again, as you said, until the Fords can prove themselves. Um, whistle blown. Almost another turnover. Going to be the Ford's ball. I mean, that's what you see from Radner, too, is they don't let up. I mean, they're playing heavy contact defense here up to the 30-yard line. I mean, they're continuing to swarm a a around the ball, and that's what we talked about earlier is Radner's defense and how they're causing these turnovers. It allows them to get the ball to the midfielders to push onto the offensive end. Absolutely. As Walker passes it to Perdelli. Up top. 625 left to play in this third quarter. Shot taken. No good. Fords scoop it back up. Walker. Trying to take it herself. Shot. Just wide. I mean, let's give credit where credit's due. That is a good shot by Perdelli coming across the net, firing across her body, trying to go top left shelf exactly where you have to. Just did not connect that time. But that's a good, it's a good look and a good shot choice. I like that selection, and that's the type of looks that are going to win you games. That's got to be some sort of whistle. Yeah, Walker yeah. falls. Whistle gets blown. Time still runs. And this is this is one of the situations where this running clock uh, definitely hurts. Where a play stops. Nope. And as I say that, the clock stops again. Number 19, Hillary Elsner scoring that. Her first of the game. Um... Yeah, I mean, Elsner, a factor last year for sure. The Rutgers commit. It's exactly what she does. She gets up there. She's got the longest stick as the attacker, and she's going to go out there and do the work, get in the center, get in the eight, the, the 12 meters, and just find open looks. It's what we saw her do last year and the year before that. We're going to continue to see her do it throughout the season, especially as they play weaker opponents. It's tough to do that against a Radner team where they have multiple commits on the defensive end, offensive end. Absolutely. Uh, there's talent all throughout this Raptors lineup. And that's not to say there's not talent throughout the Fords lineup as well, uh, but the Raptors, we see, have a lot of players playing at a higher level, whether that be next year or two years from now, as we've seen a lot of seniors and juniors start committing to colleges. I believe, can, can sophomores commit now? Is that verbally commit? They can verbally commit. There's no. Can't officially sign. Yeah, there's no signing. But I mean, yeah, we saw Walker commit. Um, 
I forget the exact school. We can get back to you on that, but I know she just committed. Um, and a bunch of these these girls are not gonna play Division One or Division Two lacrosse, but a lot of them are gonna continue to build upon what they learned and play club lacrosse in college, and that's a fact because they've continued um, their journey as Radner fires one again, puts them back up 10, 14 to four here at AG Cornog Field. As we are back to the draw, we were just blessed to have Andreas up here in the booth with us. Just a great guy. We've talked about him before. Guy to put a smile on your face. I Absolutely. Mean, it's just amazing. Security guard here at the Forge Center. Um, and, you know, kudos to him out here in all sorts of weather. He's out here late at night in the afternoons. Um Keeping us safe. Uh, we thank you a lot for that, Andreas. As we see the Fords in possession again. Trying to take this running clock away. Shot! Oh, oh bounces wow. off! I thought it was going to sneak Right past, but it's just kicked off the top, and it will not squirt right past. That one had a little accent to it. Ferocity. And I I am surprised that the Raptors defense was able to stop that. Yeah, I mean, you got to think if Radner pushes one in within the coming minutes it's the beginning of the inevitable end that we all knew was coming but the forwards got a direct here compact the swing fire one in she's gonna drop back pass across and as we now see for Delhi again up top hoping to return one of the 14 favors that the Raptors have given uh, need to start playing with some authority. They really do. Um, and it's not looking great at the moment. Down 10. 140 left to play in this third quarter. Shot taken, though. Walker with that one just wide and right. It looks like we might have a substitution in for goalie. For Radner, with uh, assuming why they're warming up, number 21, Avery Tyrell. As Jansen would come out, but the Ford's going to have a look. Shot. Shot. Scored. Couldn't tell. It looked like Jansen had it in her stick for a second, but the Ford's are going to stop the bleeding on this running clock. It's a 14 to 5 ball game. Wonderful job there. By the Fords, uh, and that goal scored by number 13, Maddie Schaefer. Haven't seen a lot of her this game. Saw a lot of her last game, but she makes her mark. You know what I, I've seen? Um, looking through these windows a little foggy, it looks a little fictional. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, honestly, you get like that kind of fairy tale type viewing experience, you could say. It really is interesting. Um, but, but oh, we're very gracious to have this space um, courtesy of the athletic department and everyone else involved that continues to let us use the booth. We're very, very grateful for that.
Ratner not letting up anytime soon. They're under a minute to go here in the third. Here come the Raptors. 50 seconds remain in the third. Trying to find something. You know Radner's new logo, the Raptor? I do. When I first saw it, I could have sworn it was like a bearded dragon or something. Oh, my goodness. You're right. I was thinking that same exact thing. Until I looked closer, and you could really start to get the Raptor feel. It was like first look, I was like, that's a dragon. I don't know what it was about, but I do like their new logo, and the new uniforms look great. We got 20 seconds to go. McCloskey trying to forbid another one. Radner. Shot. With, Score. Without a shadow of a doubt. Wow. And there's another one bringing it back to a 10-point game. Just as the clock runs out for the third quarter, there's the whistle. I think if Radner continues to build upon this, as fourth quarter is going to be a breeze. Absolutely. And that goal scored by number 14, Kate Gallagher. And that's her second or her third. Um, as they bring it in for another two-minute break, 15-5 Raptors up, heading into this fourth quarter. Very, you know, it, it's an exciting one. Um, you could say it's a little bit of a blowout, but the Fords are still playing good lacrosse. Um, five goals of their own. We've seen some really good offensive possessions, some really good defensive possessions, and the same can be said for this Raptors team. Good play on both sides, but the Raptors, a very, very strong team coming out on top so far. Don't you go anywhere listening at home. We're back in a minute. Put on some folk music and join us in just under a minute for live coverage of the final 12 minutes of play. It is indeed the new goalie coming out. No protest from anyone. No complaints. As we are about to start the fourth quarter, roll the tape. As we head to the draw, if you're just joining us, welcome. We really appreciate you for tuning in. 15-5, to five, the Radnor Raptors are up. Heading into this fourth quarter, 12 minutes left to play. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're Haverford, you got to start, start to score some within the first five minutes. You get down to se seven minutes, that's when it starts to get ugly. But it is a possibility that if they can start, they can win this draw right here. I spoke it into existence, or so I tried. And this is the issue. The midfield gets stuck. And then Radner, I mean, look at this. It's the same thing we've seen all wow. season. Haverford's going to get a lucky break. But, I mean, it's got to be slippery out there. They're, they're, they're tired. They're done, I think, mentally. But they just got 11 minutes left. As the Raptors have the ball again, even though they turned it over to the Fords just a few seconds ago, it's back in their possession. Shot! Oh! Bounce! Wow! Shot! A 16-5 to five game memorandum of last year's. Goal scored there by number six. I mean, we saw. Set a screen right across the top. Fire one in. It is a Raptor invasion on the Ford's defensive end. That goal was scored there by number six, Grayson Buono. Buono? Buono? Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Radner is scoring goals, eating up goals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
just hard fought game by the Raptors. Um, and they are serving and dishing out goals left and right, dropping them in. And the Fords really trying to reduce the lead, but no implication of a change there. I mean, I really hope there's some swor sort of sports writer out here that can write an article on this Radner team and how they're playing. That is premium content. And this gap so far, 11 goals is just... We apologize for that uh, slight technical difficulty. As, as we have 9.30 left to play in this fourth quarter. As we said before, an 11-point difference. The Raptors up 16-5. to Fords with the ball. Trying to make a miracle happen. As McCloskey's with it. Fires one. one. Oh, connects. Reeled in like a fisherman by Elsner. But I don't think the Raptors want to take their foot off the pedal yet. They are not satisfied. No satis. What do you say? No satisfaction. No satisfaction. That's the word I was looking for. I mean, there's really very little criticism of Radner in the way they've played today. They're a team that plays. With charisma, they're a charismatic team. The way they kind of compose themselves, the way they bond with each other, you could tell on the sideline, the clapping ritual you talked about, the way they're passing, they know each other, they know how to play the game, they know how to win, and the same can be said for the Fords. When you put these teams together on paper, I mean, it's 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 tough. It's not an interactive video game. This is a real, you know, it's a real game that. The Ford's kind of just struggling on, but they'll strip that one and try to attack on the offensive end. Ford's trying to find something. Whistle blown. Play has resumed. Still running clock. About 7.45 left. Uh, but, I mean, you can't say anything other than that the Raptors are putting on a seminar, putting on a class for everyone watching. Uh, they have got to be pleased with their play. They're adopting new plays on defense and offense. The wind's not stopping them whatsoever. No nonsense. And at the end of the game, they're going to want to bow down after this performance. Uh, code red for the Fords. Don't know how to counter this. And, I mean, just look at this. Constant pressure. Some tapping on the left side of the body. Some contact, even. Absolutely. I mean, sort of drifting them off path. Yeah. But a lot of these Radner girls are veterans out there. This is the new norm in Radner. They will ride or die with this team. And, again, as we said... We aren't seeing them take their foot off the gas just yet. Fords with the ball. I can't see that. I believe that's Elsner who has it. Uh, it is, this window is fogged up immensely. Um, I, I do – Really, I what I find interesting, especially about high school sports. Yes, I'll say it afterwards. There's a goal, a beautiful wow. cut, a beautiful pass, and a beautiful finish to top it all off. 
the forwards knock one more in past the new goalie. Still a 10-point game. 16 to 6, 538 left to play, running clock. But what I was gonna say before, I find it really interesting, not only with girls across, uh, but all high school sports. They're playing the sport because they love it. They're not doing it for a wage. Um, not getting paid anything. They're out there because they want to climb the ladder, make it to the next level. Um, and I I think it's really heartwarming to a point. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Rain, shine, snow, it doesn't matter. They're out there. They love the game. They're playing for the love of the game. I mean, they're staying loose out there, too, especially in this cold weather. I mean, they're indirect, direct, passing. I mean, everything has been on point considering all the elements um, and everything. And this weather has been no aid to them at all. I mean, this is not. Yeah, and I think, Matt, we have no idea what it's like to be actually out there on, on the bottom of the turf. I, I totally agree with that, Connor. I meant to say out there running on the turf. Absolutely. And I was thinking bottom because how low it is compared to where we are. And it's been a long week, spring break. It man. has, definitely. And uh, we have to give credit to the officials as well. They're doing a great job considering the weather. They're out there doing a great job, as always. Under four minutes to go here at A.G. Cornock Field. Raptors still driving the vehicle. As I've said a few times, foot still on the gas. Tearing it up out there with confidence. And they're playing with pleasure. And the Fords, not deterred by the score on the scoreboard. But they're looking for highlights. They're looking to continue to play their game. This is a test of the strength. Oh, whistle's blown. And tomorrow, they'll probably be sitting in class at their desk, and they'll be thinking, what can I do better in order to put my team in a good position? We have a direct, I believe, Fords fire, no good. Again, if you're having for it, it's a new day tomorrow. It's a new game. Forget about this one. Continue to fight. Move on. You're still a good team, and you can still make the playoffs. Absolutely. Uh, and this has really just been a decoration for the Raptors' Christmas tree. Uh, they've been playing like this all season. This isn't a game they're not used to playing. They're used to scoring 16, 17, whatever amount of goals. This is not unusual. They've been going coast to coast so many plays, um, just outrunning and outplaying the Fords. I mean, they, they just piece things together. Coast to coast, literally. I mean, they played a team from Florida last week. They're piecing everything together, and the attack continues to work. Their offensive positioning is impeccable. They're operating successfully. This is Rodgers' month. It's their year. They're going to beat a whole lot of teams. Insanity. And as I made the statement, just another decoration. It's also just another paragraph in the book that the Raptors are writing. Uh, they're dedicated to the sport. They know how to play. And, I mean, they know how to play well. I've said it before, we'll say it again. Top team in the state. The wheat to the bread. They know how to participate. I mean, they're getting a reaction out of us, Matt. Every time they do one of these, they got us head over heels. They continue to add points on the scoreboard. And I think the root of their success, Matt, is that they're engineering these plays up to a T. I mean, they're drawing these plays up. And they're continuing to just execute as we're under a minute to go. 
They're just playing good lacrosse. I mean, bottom line, they're moving smooth like a duck in a pond. Good lacrosse. It really is. As we have 35 seconds left in this game. Great save by McCloskey. Not able to do much now with the time remaining. 16-6 to six does look like the final score. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if McCloskey just holds it. Don't, you know, hammer the nail. Play with integrity. Don't try to force anything that would be considered unsportsmanlike. Don't wander around. Present your, your team. Absolutely. Don't depend on anyone else but yourself. And I think that's what Radner has done today. They have displayed teamwork. It's a mere image watching this team compared to some of the other teams we've seen, some of these higher-end teams. Very relative, the way they play their game. And that, folks, is going to end the game. 16-6, to Raptors take the victory. Really, really solid play out there, especially in this weather. Fords played some really good lacrosse, but could not do anything against the Raptors. Yeah, and Dominant team in the state. Sorry about that. No, I apologize, Matt. You are done. If you're the Fords, clean slate. New day tomorrow. Wake up. Forget about this one. This is a wet, windy, cold, miserable night against a fantastic lacrosse team. If you're Radner, you played a heck of a game. Good luck the rest of your season. You guys play like that, you guys are going to go far. But if you're Haverford, you got to continue to fight. It's a good team. They're not out of anything. They're in contention still. they got to keep fighting. I love the Fords. And that's it for us, Matt. Really solid broadcast up here. Appreciate everyone for joining us. We'll be back for another girls across game next week. Um, I will not be here, but Matt I will. will fill in with someone, I'm sure, to give you some live coverage of this great team. Well, that's all for us tonight. Thank you all at home for joining. 16-6, to six. Radner advances to 4-1 of the season. The Fords drop their fourth straight. Thank you all for watching, continuing to support it. It's Connor and Matt, Hafford Sports Media. We're out. Roll Fords.